Hello everyone, my name is John Cassidy, and today we are exploring and documenting a grand old building known as the Fairfield County Infirmary. On the site originally was a poorhouse built in 1828. This building soon filled to capacity and this large brick building replaced it in 1840. In 1850, the General Assembly required all county poorhouses to be renamed county infirmaries. The homes were no longer just for the poor. Physical and mentally ill people were now housed in the county infirmaries. The building was expanded on again in 1865, and numerous outbuildings were constructed to serve various purposes, including a laundry, tenant house, storage, and farming facilities. A farm was also established across the road from the infirmary to help sustain those living there. On this floor, we see some children's things. The building was also used as an orphanage for unwanted children. Natural gas lines were run to the infirmary in 1917 to provide lighting and heat. Then, in 1926, pipe was laid to provide water to the infirmary, which previously relied on a natural spring and groundwater. The infirmary didn't see electricity until 1958. And here is the grand staircase of the building, which we'll see more of in a little bit. The building was actually built on a hill, and we are actually on the second floor right now. We are about to go down onto the first floor, which is also actually kind of the basement. The population of the county poorhouse continued to climb until it reached its record population of 82 inmates in 1903. The unfortunates were admitted for a multitude of reasons, including both physical and mental health conditions, and drunkenness. Some spent the majority of their life at the poorhouse, and to be expected, death was a normal part of life. While many died due to medical conditions or old age, there was a few tragic deaths. One such instance occurred on March 22, 1929, when 73-year-old Jane Householder was burned alive after she opened a gas stove and caught her clothing on fire. Two attendants heard Miss Householder's screams and smothered the flames with two rugs. A doctor was summoned to the infirmary to care for the victim, but she succumbed to death nine hours later. So coming up here is like the boiler rooms and other areas that were probably off limits to the patients.
So now we're moving back into the first floor area. And to our right here is actually a physician's office. And I got a couple pictures of that. A variety of events made life at the poorhouse tolerable. County officials visited periodically to partake in dinner with the inmates. Lancaster residents also donated Christmas gifts to some of the homeless, and ice cream socials were held, and local bands and orchestras played music for the old folks. But it wasn't always a good time. In 1924, a crazed inmate attacked the infirmary superintendent while working in the fields across from the infirmary. The man suddenly rushed at the superintendent, striking him in the head with the bar he had been using to stack hay. A fellow inmate came to the superintendent's aid, and soon fellow employees captured the attacker. Suicide was another common thing on the property. Those who died and were not claimed by family were buried behind the infirmary, along with unknown travelers and those who couldn't afford a plot in a cemetery elsewhere. The majority of the burials are unknown, and only a few have headstones standing today. Coming up here is the morgue of the infirmary. In these basins straight ahead, those were where bodies were stacked and washed and rinsed. And this was the like mortician's room. Of course, it looks a little different today from, you know, the different years of renovations. And that is where they would drain the bodily fluids. And these were the freezers for the bodies. The children were stored in this smaller freezer here. And this large freezer here, which had a very dark feeling, um, this is where the adult bodies were stored. And it was also said uh, years after when they weren't used for bodies, it was used for the food of the patients. Also, they were found to be buried upright. Something about there was a scan done of the cemetery, and there were around 1,200 dots that showed up. Kind of a weird thing for sure. The farmland across from the infirmary was sold to Ohio University in the mid-1960s to establish a remote campus there. The infirmary's population continued to dwindle until just 16 residents remained when the facility closed for good in May of 1985. Those remaining residents were sent to a nursing home or foster homes. The old infirmary was remodeled in 1986, adding a sprinkler system, enclosed stairwells, emergency lighting, and a fire alarm to accommodate county offices. The building was renamed the Clarence E. Miller Building, named for the late former congressman, and served as the county's health department for the next 27 years. Given the history and age of the location, the building is said to be haunted. Many employees who worked in the building at the night have heard people talking when no one else was in the building. 
A ghost named Willie haunts the second and third floors. His name likely comes from one of the only tombstones in the Pauper Cemetery that has a name listed. A ghostly woman wearing 1800 style clothing with her hair in a bun has also been spotted by several witnesses. One woman who was working late one night looked up to see a little girl standing in the doorway. When the woman asked the little girl if she needed help, the girl vanished. Many county employees were also afraid to go into the attic due to a coldness and strange feeling about the place. We will be going up there soon. The second floor women's restroom was also said to have a haunted feeling. So coming up here is actually the jail for uh, the inmates. And um, if you watch the show Destination Fear, they did an investigation in this room. But uh, this was the room the hospital or infirmary had used for patients that were bad or people that were needed to calm down. They would put them in this room and lock the door. So now going up to the attic of the building, this is one of the areas that is supposed to be very haunted, and you'll see why here in a little bit. At one time, the building was also used in the Underground Railroad, and straight ahead, those stairs led up to like a little lookout, and they would put a candle up there so people knew to stop here. So over here is why the attic is rumored to be haunted. Patients were chained to this wall when they were bad or misbehaved, similar to the jail, but this was probably for patients that weren't as bad. And um, it's just one of those inhumane things they did to the patients back then.
By 2011, the building was literally falling apart. Mold, crumbling walls, loose bricks, and other concerns were commonplace. A study showed the facility would require over $4 million in renovations to resurrect the building. The health department decided to move and lease a modern facility in late 2013, and the old poorhouse sat vacant until purchased by Adam Kimmel in 2020. He is the mastermind behind the restoration of the Madison Seminary, and now him and his team are tackling the building step by step. It's truly an amazing building, and it definitely has strong bones. Well, that's going to conclude my video tour and documentary of the Fairfield County Infirmary. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe, and you can also join the discussion in my Urbex Discord. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, be sure to check me out on social media, and thank you for watching, everyone.